Oh, brother. We have been waiting a long time. Like six months ago, we thought, let's do a Dynasty show. And here it is. This is a whole week dedicated to Dynasty players, Dynasty rosters. You are going to love it if you play in any kind of Dynasty. If you don't, you're going to soon. Check it out. Hey, Foot Clan, Dynasty Week is just getting started. Dynasty Week? Oh, Did Dynasty. you say Dynasty Week? Honestly, you scared me a little bit, Mike. But yes, Dynasty Week is starting, and the Ultimate Draft Kit is being released on June 1st. And this year, you can get the Dynasty Pass as part of the UDK+. Plus. It's got fully updated Dynasty startup rankings, rookie rankings, rookie risers and fallers, trade targets from Mike the Fantasy Hitman right. Oh, they're so good. And so much more. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Dynasty Week, yeah. Hey, hey, Dynasty time, yeah. <laughs> oh, welcome in. Tuesday, May 11th. Hey, guess what week it is? I'm going to think it's Dynasty Week. We are here with show one of two. On kind, Dynasty Week. Kind of three. Kind of th four, maybe. If, well, let's, let's kind of five. I can do <laughs> well, this no, all we, day. <laughs> <laughs> We've you, got the live stream. mess with the horns. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figure maybe on the footcast for everybody at jointhefoot.com, we'll do some, you know, bend towards the Dynasty questions a little bit. Favor okay. the Dynasty-oriented questions. Did I catch one. a live stream in there? There is a live stream. Ooh. Well, there's a lot going on, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Oh, yeah. Without hitting the drop for Dynasty Week, because that would be illegal. So let's do that. Welcome to Dynasty Week. <laughs> Jeff, you, you have fun with that one, Mike? That was, yeah, it was pretty fun to make it. So now that I can officially discuss what's taking place this week, the fantasy footballers are excited to bring you Dynasty Week. Quick question today. We'll be talking Dynasty strategy. We'll have some news we're going to go over. Uh, we're going to be doing Dynasty differences on today's show, which is kind of looking at players that we have different from the consensus or one another in the Dynasty startup rankings. And then we're going to be talking through the old, bland, and undervalued players. Very important. Yeah. In Dynasty, when you're looking at the aged veteran and you think, I'm done. I'm done with that character. But maybe. They might have some value. Maybe you can squeeze a little yeah. bit more out of that player. Uh, a live stream, a Dynasty live stream tomorrow, Wednesday, on uh, BallersLive.com. We're going to do 11 a.m. Pacific and talk some Dynasty questions. And then on Thursday, we're going to do a Dynasty by Cell players to trade for and trade away for your dynasty leagues and a mailbag with dynasty questions and <laughs> today's show the one you're listening to right now is jam-packed with a lot of awesome stuff and uh we are also doing some very special dynasty week giveaways one signed jersey on twitter and one on instagram okay Ooh. and here's how you enter it's an aj brown signed jersey for twitter and in Austin Eckler jersey for Instagram. Awesome. Excellent. And all you have to do is follow our main account. Twitter, it's at the FF Ballers. Instagram, it's at Fantasy Footballers. And our personal accounts, Mike is at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway, Jason at Jason FFL. And then you comment on the post. Now, Brooks is going to be putting a Dynasty Week post up, and we want to hear your best Dynasty trade ever. The best trade you've ever made. And if you bring up your Todd Gurley trade one more time, Andy, I, you I'm know. throwing you into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> it was too good. I will reply, and I will use the hashtag Dynasty Week <laughs> to be entered to win. And that trade was great. Yeah, you don't get to win the jersey because you won the trade <laughs> too hard. <laughs> yeah, so full details on the giveaway post. That'll be up tomorrow. Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram at Fantasy Footballers. Here's the quick question for the day. 
Dynasty strategy question. What is one lesson or tip you have learned from playing in a dynasty league over the past five plus years? Mm. So what's one tip or lesson you want to share with the Foot Clan? Oh, there's so many, so many. Um, I'll, I'll hop in here. For anybody that's out there that maybe hasn't done a Dynasty League or you're joining one this year, you can do that uh, at FootClanLeagues.com. For all the, the Foot Clan that's out there, you can find leagues there. If you're like, I want to get into Dynasty and I haven't played yet. Or you've played and you're doing another new startup league. My tip is for startup drafts. The value of these young veterans, I'm going to call it the first 40 picks the first 40 picks in Dynasty League startup drafts are massively important. They are so much more important than all the other capital that you can get future picks and, and uh, you know, the, the deeper players and all the long shots and uh, the hopefuls. Look, fantasy, that we've, we've said this before, and this is just the, the biggest truth of all fantasy, that far and away the greatest predictor for future success is past success. The people who are good in the NFL tend to not just somehow disappear and not be good. They age out eventually, but when you're in your dynasty startup drafts, like you're building your roster for the next decade. Everybody it's it's the it's so much more important than a normal redraft league because this is going to affect you forever. And so if you can trade up into those picks, give away some future, yeah. give, give away, you know, multiple mid round, late round picks, do whatever you can to trade up and get one or two or f squeeze three more of those top 40 type players onto your roster. And it will set you up so much more disproportionately um, than all the other little moves that you can make. And I would, I would even go so far as to say, if you're at the, if you're at the top, I mean, those top players are extraordinarily valuable, but I'm willing to trade down a little bit if that's what I'm using to trade back up into multiple young multiple first 40s exact multiple first 40s as we always say multiple yes. first 40s um yeah I mean there's just there's there's a handful of young proven NFL fantasy options and you want them all right I guess my tip or lesson that I've learned and want to bestow upon the listener out there is simply balance and then i'm going to also throw in what i'll call the devil the devil of the rookie draft okay mm. where you know in dynasty you are the general manager of your team it is very fun to construct hypothetical scenarios in your brain about what the next five years of your perfect draft picks will turn your team into but we've played enough years in enough leagues to simply to see it go wrong to see the rookie drafts and the busts that come out of them, to see the perfectly constructed young teams that never mature into greatness. And I think for a successful dynasty player, you need to have balance and you need to recognize the difference between known and unknown. Jason just said the greatest indicator of uh, future success is past success. The rookies, the youth, it all we can only paint rosy scenarios for the unproven player when they have high draft capital. We never we can't see the bust. It's just not human nature. If you're drafted in the first Kyle Pitts being an example, he's the fourth pick of the NFL draft, you're only going to see roses for Kyle Pitts. But it doesn't work out statistically where every one of these guys is a home run. And maybe they're not a home run, but maybe they're just a Corey Davis. Maybe you drafted Corey Davis at the top of your rookie draft, and he's just Corey Davis, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, everybody that's drafted, you're 100% you're right, Andy. Everybody who's drafted in the beginning of the first round, they're drafted because you think they're going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. That's why they go there. I, while you were talking, I was like, you know what? Let's pull up our Dynasty League. Now, in our Dynasty League, just so that you know, we, we, we know Dynasty as well. We, we usually focus the show on redraft. Um. Mike, how many times have you been to the championship in in uh, in the last like six years? Twice. Oh, that's that's really good. Andy, how many championships do you have? Two. Oh, that's good. J myself, how many do I have? Yeah, two. you got two. We're, I'm just. I'm, it's classic Jason yeah, right yeah. there. That's just Man. classic slow but, brag. Look, but you're, the you're, slow brag. I get it. But I'm letting you know it's just us three in the league, though. So it's really weird that we. <laughs> but over here, your farts don't smell as good over here. Mm. I know oh, you're loving oh, them over man, there. They're so good, but they just smell the, bad. The to popcorn me. is fantastic. <laughs> well, they smell bad to you because you got two uh, silver medals. Sil silver medals. Yeah, more than anyone else in the league. Listen, so I went back to our <laughs> dynasty league, 
and I looked at the 2019 draft board just two years ago, sure, right? Sure, sure, sure. Here's the first six picks. The best. The the. I mean, these are our the surefire. Our rookie draft in our league. The 101 was Nikhil Harry. It didn't work out so well. Uh, Your farts smell better than Nikhil Harry. Josh Jacobs. You got a uh, little. Yeah, that's, you, you that's got a good little. Pick. Yeah. Is it? Uh, do, would you, do you like him now? I yeah. I don't know. Uh, Miles Sanders, three. Okay. David Montgomery and Daryl Henderson. Those were the top there you go. five picks of the draft. The hypothetical future firsts are worth infinite potential. So if you can trade them for fair value of a known commodity, you just drafted a good player that's already established himself. That's the point. If you trade them for somebody that's already good, don't pretend that every single player you draft is going to be the best in the history of the NFL at that position. You know, Clyde Edwards Alaire is probably going to be a good pro. He also probably, you know, isn't going to be the number one overall running back for the rest of his career. So there can be only one. But that pick, that number one overall pick last year, was worth a lot. And so yep. it, just find balance in the way you build your team and know that you you might want to win some now, not just three years from now. And my tip that I've uh, come to just really accept, and it's very difficult, is we all know the short shelf life of a running back in the NFL. The, the position is incredibly difficult. Uh, very few of them actually get to a second contract that has any type of financial value for them. It takes the toll on the body. And we know historically, running backs, once they are about 27 years old, things fall apart quickly. Now, every once in a while, you have an outlier. I totally get that. But those players still have tremendous value. 26-year-old and 27-year-old running backs who are known to be awesome for fantasy football. In Dynasty, you got to release your personal connection to those guys and trade and get the bag because someone will pay up a lot in known players and rookie picks, which it's rookie picks. That's where you need to make your hay for, uh, for running backs, in my opinion. But it's going to feel bad because often you'll feel like, oh, I got out a year too early. But getting out a year too early on a fantasy running back is infinitely better than getting out a year too late because if you get out a year too late, too early. you get – Absolutely nothing. Willy Wonka shows up and says, you get nothing. It's something to be aware of. I mean, the trade you talked about before, it was it was moving on from Gurley to get a younger Delvin Cook yeah, on the year that I thought Cook would break out. Ezekiel Elliott will be 26 years old when the season starts this year. Is Ezekiel Elliott entering the cash out category? Absolutely. He is in the in the category of you don't want to get caught holding the bag if you can get value for him, you should. I just, Brooks and I just made a trade where I acquired him and I could be caught holding the bag, but we're in a kind of a, a unique situation because there's an Aaron Rodgers bag to be held as well in that <laughs> you, trade. Oh, yeah. Sometimes during a trade, you can both be holding the bag. Yeah. That's true, too. But, like, Derrick Henry is 27 years old. Yeah. He's, he's a perfect – I mean, it, you, you could sell him for a ton. Maybe. You can get a ton for Derrick Henry right now. And and that's not to say he's not going to be good this year. Right. But if you get a ton for it, then it's worth it even if he's good. We were just talking on the Lefko show about sports cards and how he says do not invest in running backs at the sport, you know with sports cards because the short shelf life – and you start to think about it, for these guys to go down in history – they have to do historical things over their career, and it's just rare. It's very rare at the position, mm -hmm. and um, you know we've said it a thousand times on the show. Mamas, don't let your boys yeah. grow up to be running backs because yes. it's yeah, it's not like the wide receiver position or the quarterback position. All right, let's uh, we're gonna get into our dynasty differences before let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Oh. Speaking of young running backs, mm. Carry on Johnson was officially released by the Detroit Lions and uh, signed by the Eagles. Carry on he's, he's back, baby. Carry on Johnson will be 24 uh, this year. And I, I'm throwing it to Jason because you are. Who else can you throw it to? Well, yes. You, you have. Uh, associated your name, mm. your name, and your brand very closely 
with Carry On Johnson. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> mistakes are made. Go on. It hasn't worked out, but you have gone on record and said the best thing that can happen for Carry On Johnson at this point. This was a bit ago. You saying him going to a new team where he can resurrect, possibly resurrect his career. You're the truther. He's on the Philadelphia Eagles. Miles Sanders in the way, but other than that, there's room for him on the depth chart. Can well, he, Kenny Gainwell, come on. Can yeah, he resurrect? I mean, no, I, I, I don't think so. I think his... Oh, no. I, I, I don't. I mean, what I Abandoned loved... Abandoned ship, everybody. What I loved... Jason's uh, out. Yeah, I'm out. Um, what I saw in college from Carry On... Uh, you know, he went to the Lions. It, I loved it. it there was a nice preseason run. I just looked it up the other day. Yeah. I mean, he had some stretches of relevance and then kept getting injured. And then since then, he I think he still plays with a leg brace now. He's never looked the same. There's a reason they cut him. And and I, you know, I'm not I'm not very worried about uh carry on Johnson for the value of the other running backs there. You know, was was anybody here, you know, was carry on Johnson a worry? For your DeAndre Swift thoughts? No. Exactly. So, I mean, this is a depth piece. Uh, it makes sense for the Eagles, and they they hope that he can resurrect his career. He's only 24 years old, but I he he hasn't looked the same. Like, the last year, this 2020 season, when I watched him on the field, I was like, ugh, he just doesn't look like what he did. I've said it once. I'll say it again. Any team that has Jordan Howard on the roster can have carry on Johnson on the <laughs> roster. <laughs> Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars have signed tight end Tim Tebow to a one-year contract. Tight end, yes. Uh, are you drafting him? No. 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 But it is funny. Yeah. Look, okay. See if they get that Tebow magic. Sure. Give a speech in the locker room. Maybe. Or Should have done it 10 years ago. Or or maybe he'll just be off the team in a month. Yeah. I mean, that. I think his last stint in the NFL, he was – preseason signed by the Patriots but did not make the the game day roster mm, or the uh, season roster. And then I wanted to bring up these Julio Jones trade rumors <sighs> as well. They're hot. Uh, Ryan McDowell tweeted that he's been told Julio Jones will not be with the Falcons in 2021. Um, this is just one more piece of smoke to this Julio Jones over the last few weeks fire of trading him away. And does he go – you know, is there anywhere he can, any place he can go and make an impact for fantasy the way he would in Atlanta? Which I think the answer is unequivocally no. no. But if he's not there, holy crap! I if mean, he's not, that's Kyle in, Pitts and Calvin, Calvin Ridley. Ridley. This is what I, the part I wanted to focus on is, like right now, you if you want to make that speculation trade for Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton because of all the rumblings and the whispers that somehow, some way, Aaron Rodgers is going to end up on the Denver Broncos. Look, I'm for it. I'm for taking the shot, because those are good players on top of that. But taking the shot on going hard in the paint right now, maybe someone's not paying attention, sending an overwhelming offer to get Calvin Ridley in the chance that Julio Jones – is traded away. I think we have a higher chance of Julio Jones being traded away than Aaron Rodgers going to the Denver Broncos. And if Julio is gone, you've seen Calvin Ridley's numbers. The dude averages over 100 yards a game uh, when when uh, when Julio Jones is off the field. He's going to be unstoppable. Um, here's another tip for – since this is Dynasty Week, um, older players who are awesome – which that's Julio Jones, right? Fits that category. He's awesome. Dominating in fantasy. Super helpful, but he's older. It's it's hard to trade those players, even though they're unbelievable and you want to capitalize on them. You want to get a haul. Whenever you've got those type of players, trade them right before your trade deadline to teams trying to make a last second push to the playoffs. I had Julio. I was able to uh, convert him into CeeDee Lamb uh, at the trade deadline last year. Um, in our dynasty league, that's the time when you're like, man, I think I need to get off of this player before I, you know, before he starts getting too old to really be able to net something in return. Just wait to that trade deadline. I think people love Calvin Ridley in dynasty. That would be my only thing. Like, I don't know. S certainly. Like it's going to have to, it will have to be a very overwhelming offer. I guess, I guess the question then is what is the difference between Calvin Ridley this year with and without Julio big. 
last year when you look at the splits between uh, Ridley with Julio and without, they, you know, he was good in both situations, but he definitely took a a step up in the games that Julio was was out. So it just makes sense, right? More targets, more yards are going to go his way. Last all the year he was, opportunities the, he was always the, good him. the number one wide receiver in all of football receptions, 10 to 19 yards. That's the way that offense works. I mean, he they just he, he's always open, um, mm -hmm. but I, I guess I just wonder what kind of trade up would you make for Ridley? You know what I mean? Like what right. what what dynasty wide receivers do you like more than him if Julio's not there? We'll put it that way. I, off the top of my DK head, DK Metcalf. No, I'd take Kelvin. Okay, so these rumors we don't know what's going to happen, but. This is a situation where Julio could end up on the Colts or the Titans or another franchise pretty quick. I think that's it, Brooks. You got anything else for us? That's all we got for news. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. Switch your di uh, your dynasty league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today. All right, um, I think we're going to talk some dynasty differences. But would you like to share anything with us today? Um. Yeah, I think I would. I would love to. I would love to share a way to get in shape, Foot Clan. Uh, look, we want to thank Fight Camp for helping to support this podcast. Yeah, and for we being are, we do, Jason. And awesome. We like Fight Camp. We do like Fight Camp. They're amazing. I mean, look, I we're all competitive people, and so when you know working out isn't always the most fun, but scoring and doing better and being able to measure your success and also punching things is yeah. really, really, really fun. Fight Club. Uh, fight camp is is just the best way to do that you want to learn how to box or kickbox you're an experience it doesn't matter if you're new or experienced they have things for every level of skill even kids you're not lifting heavy weights so it's safe for uh you know the entire family to really get in shape uh, have good cardio have good exercise uh and learn a great skill at that they their gear comes with everything you need at home freestanding punching bag boxing gloves the quick hand wraps everything including the tracking sensors there's tons of different qualified trainers and 600 plus workouts you'll love it it's a really really great way to exercise to box to do all of that and you can pay for fight camp right now over 24 months for less than the cost of a boxing gym and you can get it right away plus fight camp offers free shipping with a 30-day money-back guarantee so just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get free shipping on fight camp go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers again to join go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers we'd like to thank manscaped for sponsoring today's show ladies and gentlemen manscaped already had the best body hair trimmer on the market. Oh, you talking about the 3.0? I'm talking about back when it was the 1.0. Oh, my man. And, then and then the then 2 they said, and then the like, 3. Let's make this better. A 2, a 3. Mm. What's the next number? They don't rest on their laurels at Manscaped. The 4.0, it is now available for purchase in the USA or Canada. And right now you can get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code footballers at manscaped.com. Like I said, fellas, the best body hair trimmer on the market. You don't want to be shaving your face and your body with the same exact razor. And Manscaped is here bringing the ceramic blade, the skin safe technology. They're taking all the nicks and snags out of the of the equation. Kind of important. <laughs> Look, it, when, when you're in <laughs> kind of a big deal when you're, when you're in sensitive areas, you got to protect yourself. And I have been a long time subscriber to man or user of Manscaped products. I back them thoroughly. They have the Fantasy Hitman seal of approval. I don't know if, if that's ever been given out on the show, but they have it. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code footballers at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping. Manscaped.com. Use the code footballers. Get it today. All right. Let's get into some dynasty differences. See, the first rule of fight camp is you can talk about it, Jason. Mm. Yes. You yeah. actually are allowed to. Second yes. rule as well, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, they, they, they encourage it. Yeah. All right. Uh, biggest differences in our Dynasty startup rankings right now. We're going to go through some of these. Uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, Mr. Jason Moore. Uh, right Ooh. now, Mike and I both have Jamar Chase, rookie, uh, often the 101 in a yeah, lot of rookie sure. drafts. 
some nausea, some some chase. Yep. Some pits. It, it happens. <laughs> some pits. Uh, you and I, Mike, we both have them at 10, which is uh, very, I mean, that's, that's very aggressive. bullish. It is. It almost feels like we're the ones that should be yeah. having to no, you're about to. give yeah. an account for that. That's a little aggressive. Jason, you're at 19, though. So that is a difference. It's a big difference between the two of us and you. And um, I guess, you know, he was drafted to be great. Oh, yeah. Well said. Just so, explain. So maybe talk it, to us a little bit about. Yeah. Why are you out on Jamar Chase? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the funny thing. So I wasn't I, I was not a part of the show when we were going through those wide receivers. I had my notes in and I remember uh, you guys sharing my notes yeah. and I talking about how I hated Jamar Chase because I, I was not pre-draft um he was my wide receiver three so and that was like you know faux pas you're not allowed to not have him at least two but he should be number one according to consensus um and, and he wasn't to me now he ended up at the best spot for sure gets his college quarterback drafted to be great with a top five NFL pick and I think that the hype is gone is way too far Everything we've talked about already on this episode, the tips and tricks that we have learned to succeed, the fact that, you know, proven success is more valuable than hype and hope. I think right now, so close or to... Or hype hope. Yeah. Uh, so uh, close to hope. the NFL draft, it's it's out of control. And I think that, you know, a lot of people have him up that high near the top 10. And I think that is outlandish. Um, there's other players in that range, Michael Thomas, uh, Alan Robinson, Chris Godwin. These guys are still young and phenomenal, and they're great. The only way that, that Jamar Chase makes sense here to be a top 10 wide receiver in startup picks is if he is locked, uh, he's just a lock to be a top five fantasy wide receiver. Like then, okay, that makes sense. But if not, then this is a waste of a pick because – First of all, he's not going to be that great player until a couple years from now, usually following the general trends of, you know, history. Um, you know, I have him comped more as like a DJ Moore type. That That's kind of where I see his future going versus a Devontae Adams, um, you know, top fantasy wide receiver in the league. And, and, and so that's part of this is just a, a different evaluation of talent and situation. We don't know for sure that Burrow's going to be great. Um, that Jamar Chase is going to be great. And I can't imagine taking him over a veteran-proven commodity. So that's why I have a much lower. When I look at my dynasty startup ranks and who I I put above him, those are the names where it's like I'm, I'm taking Chris Godwin and Michael Thomas and Terry McLaurin and CeeDee Lamb and, and DK Metcalf and these guys that I know have done it over them. And to kind of – show a little bit of where a top 10 ranking is over the last several years. Uh, our man, the Borgogan has some hot research for us over the last six rookie draft classes, the highest in dynasty startup ADP for any first round wide receiver, wide receiver was Corey Davis, who was f wide receiver 14. Sure. So a wide receiver 10 ranking is the best over the last six years. It's saying we know he's going to be unbelievable, and we're we're pulling the trigger of that. Of the 18 first-round wide receivers taken since 2016, there's only two of them so far that have entered the top 10 in Dynasty ADP by their second year in the league. So we are projecting a really, really otherworldly performance to have Jamar Chase that high. I don't think he belongs that high. I would not draft him in a startup draft that high. Um, I... Honestly, I feel like I've ranked him really, really high at wide receiver 19. Um, but obviously, that that probably is going alongside my pre-draft analysis that, you know, I, I didn't see the separation that you would want to see um, in, a, in an absolute stud. Uh, but he's obviously good. And I'm not anti-Jamar Chase. I'm just comparatively down on him. Okay. I think it's fair. I think I'm a, a little aggressive with my ranking with him. I'm actually surprised. I'm not surprised that Mike has him that high. I know he believes in the talent and likes mm -hmm. him. And obviously the number five overall pick is a very significant place to go in the NFL draft. And I, I, I don't know if there's a way to fact check it. This was just one of the things that came out during the draft process that Jamar Chase, uh, uh, when they polled GMs or coaches, I can't recall which, he's the first unanimous number one wide receiver in a draft class since Calvin Johnson. So it, it was not it's not just fantasy players who believe in Jamar Chase. It's the NFL. 
without question. Chase. Yeah, without question. I I'm excited. I think you know. It depends on how you're building your your dynasty startup composition, as well. I mean, so much we all we're addicted to the rankings and putting them in a certain order, but the composition of your team matters too. You say, hey, I can't imagine not taking one of these established veterans. Well, I mean, how are you building your team? How are you building your dynasty startup roster? He's what twenty one years old. Yeah, I mean, 20, just barely twenty one. He's twenty one. As far as a quarterback situation goes, it looks like he has a long term future. Uh, I mean, I would take Joe him. Burrow. I would take him over Michael Thomas because you're going to gain you gain eight years in a dynasty league, and the quarterback situation for Mike, Michael Thomas is really up in the air. Whereas Joe Burrow at you know, it's yeah. all about what you evaluate and believe about the situation, but I think that's where you would draw the differences. Yeah, just a dis difference of of opinion there. I mean, I you know, I yep. want the guys that I know have done it and can do it. All right, I have Jerry Judy at twenty four overall. Jason has him at thirty two. Okay. Mike thirty three. So I'm more bullish on Jerry Judy, and I'm kind of falling in love. Now, is that with Roger pre Rogers or post Rogers? It, it really doesn't have anything to do with Rogers. Rodgers is a little, like, what if that sits in the background of, like, this situation could become nuclear for Jerry Judy, like, fast if Rodgers is the quarterback. But he's, he's 22 years old. And it wasn't what you hoped for from his rookie season, but not for lack of trying. He was out there giving it he his He gave all. it his best every week. He was Six, open a lot. 62% of his targets were considered catchable. That's 107th among all wide receivers. The most incomplete targets, Ian uh, Hartitz uh, put this out there, most incomplete targets that were determined to be the quarterback's fault, Jerry Judy was number one on that list. There were stretches of games last year where he was on 100-plus target pace and 35 reception levels of uh, it's ridiculous season totals, which Oof. just says that there was a disconnect at the quarterback position. We know that disconnect. His name is Drew Locke. But... Um, you know, he still went out, got 113 targets. He plays in the inside part of the field. I talked about that 10 to 19 range where Calvin Ridley's living. Uh, Jerry Judy was like seventh last year in that department. He owns the middle of the field. He's got wheels. And this is year two for him. He's a 15th overall draft pick. I feel like in Dynasty, it's a no-lose proposition to trade for him right now where he's at. People are excited about Sutton coming back. Jerry Judy's coming off a kind of disappointing rookie year, 856 yards on 52 catches, just three touchdowns, which that's a number that's going to change over the course of his career. So I feel like they're going to fix the quarterback position, whether it's now with Rodgers, whether it's a year from now or two years from now with a veteran. And Jerry Judy just has so much upside. You watch the film. He's, you know, a great dynamic player that just had a disconnect issue at quarterback. If you fix that, you know, I think the worst case scenario was this last year, but I think it can change very, very quickly. Just 22 years old, and I am, I'm just really targeting him in all of my dynasty leagues right now. He should get better. He's young. Obviously, uh, there were very few people more pro Jerry Judy than I was last year. Had him in a lot of places. I do think that there is more that is on him than is credited. It's not 100% Drew Locke. He was open, but he, he dealt with a lot of drops. I remember watching and being very disappointed um, in, in some of those things. I still believe that Cortland Sutton is the alpha of the team, but I think you're right, Andy, that it, right now the value of Jerry Judy is is not at an all-time high, right? He came out and had a disappointing rookie season. You're not – like, talking about, okay, you want to trade for Calvin Ridley. What's it going to cost you? Everything. You want to trade for Jerry Judy? That's a deal you can get done. That's where you could trade a veteran. Um, and well, you can try. Well, right. I mean, I'm I not, failed. <laughs> you, you tried. Yeah, I tried a lot. What did you? What'd offer? you offer? I had to trade with Al. Ooh. I offered him uh, quite a bit. I offered him Fuller and James Robinson for Jerry James. Judy. He's still trying to unleash the, the what do you James. Expect me to do? <laughs> not hand hand someone a bag of flaming poop. It's, and try and convince them that it, it's good for their team? Ask him who his third running back is on his dynasty roster. Oh, who's your third running back on your dynasty roster? <laughs> now, now does James Robinson sound slightly better? Yeah. Look, it, I, like how, I like how the argument here is that you can't try to trade your players that, you know, you have on. What am I supposed to do with James Robinson? Just sit in it? Yep. You got to hold and, you, and get you whatever gamble. value. I don't have to do nothing you tell me to do. <laughs>
But uh, but I think I like him a lot more than Sutton in a dynasty league. Okay. Cortland Sutton's coming off a major injury, unrestricted free agent in 2022. Jerry Judy um, has more upside to me over the course of his career than Cortland Sutton does. No disrespect to him. I think Sutton's a great player. But I think the future of that team at the wide receiver position is Jerry Judy soaking up targets. And I don't think Sutton's going to hurt him this year at all. I, I, I do know this. Um, I know that Sutton is referred to as the heart and soul of the locker room. He is like the leader of that offense um, in the in the beat writer circles. So I fully expect it. I, I realize he's, you know, he, his contract is coming up, but everybody's does this time after they're, you know, drafted. And I think he'll get a long-term extension. And this should be a good one-two punch. I mean, that's the thing for fantasy football. We know this. We talk about it every offseason is that there are so many teams that end up with multiple top 24 wide receivers on the same team. You need that one-two punch. I still I still have – You need a ahead. quarterback to be able that, to support that, though. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Mike has Raheem Mostert lower than both of us. Uh, 29 years old, Raheem Mostert. Mike has him at 37. We have him around 25, 26. Yeah, I I'll admit, I mean, Mostert is, is a scary proposition for Dynasty the, League. Scary uh, as can be because I feel like he could disappear in three weeks. And you kind of went quickly through that age part. Raheem Mostert is 29 years old. Now, it's been a very different uh, ride to where he has gotten in the NFL. Like He you know, essentially came out of nowhere, had to work his way up. But he's 29. He is on the last year of his contract. His team just traded up in the third round to get a running back. They also grabbed another play in the, player in the sixth round. He's never really held up to a real workload. He played 16 games in 2019, but if you rem remember what happened, like uh, it was like he was Coleman on the team, and Raheem Mostert wasn't unleashed until the second half of the season. So it's they have never gotten a full time workload for Raheem. He is an electric player. His story is awesome. I'm I'm very happy that the man made the money that he made, but he is his replacement is already here. His replacement is on the team, and. This is exactly what I was talking about. I mean, a little bit more uh, advanced in age than I was talking about with the, the running backs that are uh, 27. But I would be trying to trade Raheem Mostert. I, you're not going to get extreme value. And, and maybe it's – let me say this. If I'm a contender, I'm probably just going to hold on to Mostert and let his fantasy value expire on my bench uh, after the year. Because he can still be very good. I think this, this year, year could be very, very good. And I it's, agree. It's very hard. He has fewer career carries than Henry had last year. He has 282 career carries and yet is advanced in age. And you look at the pace he was on to start the year last year, yes. 1,200 yards rushing, 637 receiving. Yes, he was dominating. And yet, you're right. I mean, we've never seen a sustained, which, which is counted into his value. I think people don't look at Raheem Mostert as somebody who – you can trust at all, but you're right. saying, you know, um, be a little bit more careful because he could disappear as a dynasty asset overnight. Yes. Yeah. If he, if and he gets next injured, year, next, next year, he's, it's done. Yeah. His career is, is one more season yeah. long and it could be a great year because his legs are fresh. First four years of his career, he was on five teams and had 44 total carries. So That's, to be clear, I'm not allowed to try to trade him next year. Uh, you can try just yes. like James Rod. Hold, hold it too long, <laughs> or yeah, or you, you can want. gamble again. Yeah. Uh, he's an unrestricted free agent after this season, and he'll be thirty years old. Like like you said, they just drafted two running backs, but they 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 spent good capital on Trey Sermon. Yeah. So yeah, he's his career is this year, and um, I I understand having him lower in startup rankings. Like if I'm drafting, um, it, it, he could fall to a value where I would grab him, but he's certainly not someone I'm. I'm targeting. It's tough to draft a running – to draft. That's because that's specifically what I'm talking about. It's very tough to draft a running back that you know has one year max. Ironically – Yeah, you guys are giving me – I'm freaked out over here. All right? <laughs> Sorry, man. This has been a horrible episode. Why? I'd rather be ignorant. It's Dynasty Week. <laughs> no, I, I'm kidding. But, like, seriously, I'm sitting here going, like, you are – you're putting it into my brain that this is his swan song. 17 games left in the career of Raheem Mostert is what I'm hearing. That is correct. Well, uh, no, yeah, he'll probably yeah, miss a few. Eight. 
eight. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta factor that in. Um, but Golly, here's what I guess I'll just win another championship and then you, I'll let him fade away. I, I hope you do. What's ironic about this is that I'm gonna need a running back. If you already have Raheem Most, Mo, Mostert, this is a good <laughs> chance. What? To, what? what just what? happened? I, uh, mustard, mustard, Colonel Mustard. The car stalled. Mustard. Brooks, can I get a new alternator in here, please? Uh, this is one's not name turning over expiring right. Expiring too. Um, but the ironic part here <laughs> is that if you already have him, this is a good chance to trade him, move on. If you can capitalize on anything to a team trying to win, in a startup draft, you, you he's probably going to fall. And ironically. He could qualify for this next section as sure. an older statesman who actually has short-term value. Old, bland, and undervalued. If you're watching the show on YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers, that old, bland, and undervalued drop, the graphics on it, I've never seen a bigger forehead than what Mike Wright had on that picture. <laughs> I mean, that thing was Peyton Manning esque right there. Yep. You're working on it. Yep. Look, it's it's still growing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop it. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I just, head. I can just see you in the mirror. Just yeah. No, the, the head is a, that's where I'm going. Is remember that MTV oh, show? Oh yeah. That's gonna be me in about. Do you 20 try years. to when you sleep at night? Do you try to push your head up against the wall on the top, like at the top, <laughs> the top of the headboard? Yeah, put it in a vice. This is actually. <laughs> uh, we should we should let let the foot land. No, people don't know he's been wearing hats because they hide the weights. <laughs> You've got yes. weights on <laughs> under the hat to try to just kind of pulls it down, really shrink that up. All right, old, bland, and undervalued. We're talking about older players that are not old, busted for fantasy that can still give you value. When I talked about having a balanced team at the top of the show in our, our strategy section, uh, you need to have some established veterans on the roster. The need comes from the value. The need comes from the fact that people trade a lot for youth and potential and they give away a lot of older players that can give you temporary value. Now, we each selected one that we're kind of interested in in looking at, and mine is going to be Adam Thielen. Uh, he is entering what I'm going to call the Jordy Nelson zone of his career, mm -hmm. which was, uh, and Jordy Nelson entered the uh, late Frank Gore part of his career at one point in time where you just kind of waited for the shoe to drop, and it will. I mean, Adam Thielen's not going to be a fantasy contributor for very much longer. But he's 30. He'll be 31 this year. And, and Jordy Nelson went out at year 31, put up a 12, 1,300-yard, 14-touchdown season. One of the reasons I like Thielen, especially for this year, is just I think the Minnesota Vikings are a really good team. I think they're going to compete year in, uh, all year long. Justin Jefferson takes all of the accolades and the excitement and the hope and hype, as Jason mentioned it. And the ADP for Adam Thielen, it's 76 overall. And I think you're probably going to get one to two more really good years from Adam Thielen. I know there's a touchdown dependency thing that we've brought up before. But in that range, if you're looking at Chase Edmonds or Ronald Jones, if you're looking at uh, Will Fuller, like I, I offered Will Fuller for Adam Thielen in our Dynasty League earlier this week. Uh, it was turned down because, of course, but uh, – it was that's the level of player where I'm like I can get Adam Thielen potentially get a very big season out of him when nobody really wants to put him on their dynasty roster. I think people want to put a different player on there that has more years ahead of him. We, there's always in every dynasty league there are there are certain managers who are so infatuated with the young with the youth movement that their team always looks like it's going to be so dominant someday and never ever ever arrives. You have to have people who are, I don't know, scoring fantasy points in order to win games. Andy, I looked back at your championship matchup. Would you like to know three players who were in your lineup to bring home the trophy? Go for it. Uh, I would like to know. One of them is T.Y. Hilton, old busted. One of them oh, is man. Marvin Jones. Yeah, buddy. And another is the guy I'm talking about now, Tom Brady. Okay. Yes. Yes, a 40-plus-year-old player can still be good. For Dynasty. Where's he going in startup 
drafts right now? Do you have that information? I, I do have that. No, he. <laughs> Tom Brady is the 185th player drafted in startup drafts right now. That's the 15th round, and here are the names going around him. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Sony Michelle. Oh man, I'd rather be dead. <laughs> Quintez Cephas. <laughs> oh, Kylan Hill, Anthony McFarlane, and Keyshawn Vaughn. Now here's the thing. I believe, Oof. genuinely believe, that between Sony Michelle, Quintez Cephas, Kylan Hill, Anthony McFarlane, and Keyshawn Vaughn, you will have a collective zero seasons of fantasy value. Black now, yes, <laughs> they're young. They're young. Oh, you can have them for lots of years on your roster. They just won't ever be in your lineup scoring fantasy points. Tom Brady is going to be really relevant for fantasy this year and probably for like somehow three more years. But even if it's just this year, let's say he walks off and retires after this season, get one season out of a known commodity rather than hopeful upside that in it, reality will never turn into anything. It actually cracks me up because you spent forever – scaring the crap out of me about Raheem Mostert. But the compelling case is this is Mostert's last year as an NFL. At least, yeah, you and, will and, have value. And, and his, where you're drafting Raheem Mostert, obviously he's going to go ahead of a quarterback. But it's such a disparity between Raheem Mostert's perceived dynasty value and Tom Brady's perceived dynasty value where both players may have one year left. Mm -hmm. And Brady could have more. Oh, Brady's probably got 12. I mean, let's what, just like. What are the odds that Brady puts up more fantasy points in two years than Raheem Mostert does? Oh, I would say it's a guarantee. So, yeah, I think seventy plus. Percent? Oh, I would say eighty percent. Because I <laughs> you're, think you're way higher than me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say seventy eight percent. I'll see your percentage, and I will raise you five percent, but dramatically. <laughs> so um, it is interesting. I mean, Tom Brady sitting on my dynasty roster. He's probably going to get some games this year. For sure he will, and and he'll have some thirty point great performances, and he's old, and no, and you can't you can't trade if you have Tom Brady on oh, your yeah. trading block. Nobody's offering you jack squat for him. No, it's kind of silly. Like I'll give you Tom Brady for Jerry Judy. What do you think, Al? <laughs> Are you in? No. Mm. Okay. There I thought go. that was gonna get him. I did too. All right, Mike. Who's your old bland and under? Oh, gross. <sighs> yep. Yep. Um, I'm going to need everyone to hold the vomit yeah. until the. Uh, I'm unplugging my ears real until quick. the end of this one, but it has to be said. James Connor, running back for the Arizona Cardinals. Oh no! Hold on, hold on. Uh, he just turned 26, so he he is still at the age of where he could be a productive running back. Uh, and I looked it up because I'm like, you know, the season wasn't terrible. Do you realize? Before the injury in uh, week 12, James Conner was the RB14 last year. Like, he was still putting up fantasy points. It's just become very in vogue to hate on James Conner because of the promise was so high and the delivery was not there. The, the, those numbers behind that offensive line are what make me think that Najee will be fine. Because we all saw yes. on film that Conner was not – quite Correct. the player he was two years ago and so here is the reason why i think that you can make a a play at james connor last year arizona ran the sixth most rushing plays in the nfl Kenyon drake saw 264 touches the ninth most at the position before his injury he was averaging 19 opportunities a game and chase Edmonds was at 8.2 and the entire dynasty community not entire i'm being hyperbolic but the thirst for chase Edmonds is unquenchable at this point <laughs> the way that people believe in chase Edmonds, and i am i am bearish on the chase Edmonds thing do you know that chase Edmonds has seen one carry inside the five his entire career i did not know that they do not trust chase Edmonds at the goal line james connor is a much sturdier fella than than chase Edmonds. And here's here's. I have point. him down for 180 carries. Are okay. you gonna be Are you gonna be above that this year? Probably because okay. I'm. Uh, and it, and here's the thing about James Conner. I think I'm gonna be projecting him to be the primary ball carrier. It'll be more of a split with Edmonds than it was last year with Drake and Edmonds. But I do believe Conner was brought here for a reason. And here's here's what I think you can do with James Conner. 
if you were already a very successful team, you know, your your rookie picks are later and you're in the back of the second round and you want a running back, here's who you're choosing from. Maybe, maybe Kenny Game will be there. Maybe. Probably not. And then so you're looking at Ramondre Stevenson, Chuba Hubbard, Elijah Mitchell. Though that's who you're taking the shot on to be a running back. Or why not trade that back of the second and turn it into James Conner, who's at least going to give you one year of value because Arizona's not adding anybody else into the mix that's going to come in and and, uh, and muck up the gears. And James Conner could legitimately be the lead back for Arizona. And Edmonds just goes right back to the exact same role he was in last year. Drake was ugly productive last year. Yes. And Conner could certainly accomplish ugly productive. Yeah, that's what he was last year. Yeah, well, Arizona's offense, it supports that. Yeah, the pace of play, the amount of – just pure – the amount of plays that get in for the Arizona Cardinals is, is – uh, and he can catch the football. Yeah, he yes, he he has that ability. And of course, Drake could too. But Arizona, is, Arizona is going to score a ton of points. That's that's proven for the last two years with Cliff and Kyler. They're going to be one of the highest scoring offenses in the league. And somehow, it, like James Conner, I'm telling you, could turn into the goal line back or just the primary running back for the team. Okay, I don't, I don't have to like it. No, I, even no, no, if no, it's no. Accurate. I, I don't like saying it. But, but I believe it. We we listened. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> all of our dynasty and rookie rankings are available now at ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to check those out. Uh, let's do a little bit of dynasty mailbag. Mailbag. Dynasty. Woo. Uh, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, if you have a question for us. Oh, I do. Hold on. Yep, go there. Uh, thefantasyfootballers.com. <laughs> Click the Submit a Question button, or you can dial the voicemail hotline, Jason, 302-464-TFFB. Let's go ahead and grab a voicemail question to start. Hey, Fantasy Footballers. Dean from Massachusetts here. I was wondering if you could explain what taxi squads are and good examples how you have used them in the past. Thanks, guys. I believe Mike is in the leagues. With- I'm not in that league anymore, but I've I've been in the the I've used the taxi squad. Um, the it's just so just if you don't know what a taxi squad is, it's essentially a mini roster that you cannot make start sit decisions from. These players don't count towards your active roster. They're usually three to five players or so. It's it's a lot smaller than your main one, but it it just it's an extra element to dynasty where you can stash you can stash players that you believe in like your then your rookie drafts can go 5 deep 5 rounds deep or so where like ours our dynasty where we don't have a taxi squad we we do a 3 round rookie draft and occasionally there'll be someone on the waiver wire that pops up when you have taxi squads though your waiver wire is is absolutely deserted so it i it's it's fun i like to have the uh, the balance of both uh, being in a league of, of both of these types, but it was nice. It was nice having the taxi squad to throw guys onto that. Then they, you don't have to just be stashing them and going, man, I really wish I could drop this player, but I believe in them. Right. Right. It's just a little a bit nice more of a farm system. Bra- style. Yeah. It's a exactly. farm it's exactly system, a, a brave heart hold situation. You just <laughs> okay. hold. Hold. What was the name of that 49ers running back we talked about earlier? Elijah Mitchell? No, no, no. I'm Trace sp- speaking to oh, Jason Mustard. Oh. Okay. Oh, just, oh, yeah. I just no. I, I got the alternator fixed. Did you Thank call you, him Ray Mustard? <laughs> no. It is Ray Mustard. I'm sorry. That Ray actually is oh, his name. Ray, Ray Mustard. Ray That's Mustard what I meant. is not the best nickname. Uh, Smash Jackson's a little bit better than Ray Mustard. All right, startup strategy question. How early should I take a quarterback, and how many quarterbacks should I roster in a dynasty startup? And I'm going to presume one quarterback starter situation here. Um, But how many do you generally want to roster? I have seen, I mean, turnover at backup quarterbacks, that that comes quick. Yeah, I mean, I I want to roster at least three quarterbacks. Yep. um, Starting quarterbacks, and and everybody does, and you can't do that. (laughs) Uh, there's not 36 uh, starting quarterbacks in the league. I usually am willing to pull the trigger a little bit earlier in the, you know, probably the third round if I'm in one of those leagues that is late round quarterback and a Kyler type, a Josh Allen, one of these super young, 
looks like you're going to get a decade out of them. I'm willing to do that. Otherwise, if I miss out on those guys, um, I, I'm I'm usually just drafting for value. I'm taking the same tiers that we usually look at with our normal redraft leagues, and I'm going with guys that I think are going to be good, and I add at the end of my dynasty startups the old veterans. I mean, uh, you know, over the last five years when I've done startup drafts, I'm looking for Tom Brady's and Drew Brees and Ben Roethlisberger's. I'd say Philip at- Rivers and, and Roethlisberger were forever. You could just get them so late. Oh, nobody wants in a them. startup draft, and they. I mean, now yes, we are at the end of the road now. But the point is, five years ago, you could get them super late, and there's going to be other quarterbacks just like that. All right, this one I'm very interested in your guys' thoughts. Uh, oh man. Twitter question from Robert Canfield says, how many elite years of DeAndre Hopkins should I expect? Ooh. I just looked up the age. He'll be 29 when the season starts. I We just talked about Adam Thielen. Three. You think three more? I think he's going to be great at 29. I think he's going to be great at 30. I think he's going to be great at 31. That's a, that's a lot. That is enough. We've, we've talked about in the past – we look at three-year windows. Julio's 32 right now, so he'll be younger than Julio at that stage. Exactly. Like today, Julio. Right. So I, I think this is why you know Hopkins is – I don't have my startup rankings in front of me, but I know he's like – He's very high for you. My fifth wide receiver. I'm he's fine. Your, he's your number five. Oh, there you go. Uh, I am 100% fine, even though he's a little bit older, to, to say I've got a three-year window of absolute greatness. Let's win some championships. All right, and Jason mentioned it earlier. If you are looking for a good dynasty league, we built FootClanLeagues.com. It's a forum where you can find um, local and online dynasty leagues, redraft leagues, all all types with good people. Because one of the things that we've brought up since day one, I mean, your league's only as good as the people you play with. If you are in a league with like two people that are into it and hardcore and then four that ignore it, I mean – it's just not engaging. It's not fun. One or two bad uh, managers can really ruin the kind of whole league. Yeah, and don't be don't be worried about. Oh, I don't have twelve people, so do ten, yeah. do eight. Just modify the size of your starting roster, and that's that's perfectly fine. I would so 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 much rather play in a league with ten people who are all having fun and dedicated and enjoying it than a twelve, you know, a twelve owner league where you've got two teams that just aren't really involved you can't get a hold of them they miss transactions sometimes like make the hard decision and here's the thing real life matters more than fantasy so if you have somebody in your league that can't commit to the league that's fine just make those tough decisions during the off season to replace those friendships replace your friendships. that's right oh. yeah. yeah i mean it's fine it's good for them you just got to cut them out of your life Thank no, you. I totally I hear what you're saying, Andy. Yeah, thank you. no, you made it really clear. It's a good Way PSA. to put a bow on that. <laughs> All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting today's show. A Brandon Ayuk signed NFL football. Ayukin. It's up there for twenty bucks right now. It ends on Thursday. A Cam Akers signed football, twenty bucks right now. And and remember, if we haven't said it in a while, everything on there is authentic sports autographs. You're talking about JSA certified, Beckett witnessed. Um these these are all great products. Josh Beckett? Uh, yeah, he witnesses all of them. You're t- did you, was that a reference to the old pitcher? That was. A Josh Beckett Mar- <laughs> Marlins Red Sox pitcher reference? That That's what you got. Instead of just – like Beckett is a well-known sports card authenticator. Yeah, yeah. but because does Josh he, own it? Yeah, because Josh Beckett, is, he's really big into the signature crowd. Does he authenticate his own? Ooh, no, I think he's got to get someone yeah. else. You probably, he has to go PSA. He's got to go PSA. You, you got like, a third party that You can't thing. notarize your own stuff, right? No, I don't <laughs> if believe so. If you're a so. notary, you can notarize your own stuff, can't you? You can't? No, I'm just Oh, kidding. I was like, <laughs> that would be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to become a notary. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take the classes right now. <laughs> it's good, trust me. I'm a notary. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> All right. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS, and we'll be back live stream tomorrow. BallersLive.com. Make sure you subscribe so you get the notification when we go live. If you want to submit some Dynasty questions and uh, another Dynasty show on Thursday, and I promise I'll hit that Dynasty drop again. So oh, yeah. you don't want to miss it. That'll do it. Take care, everybody. Thank you for listening. Go make some Dynasty trades. It's really, really fun. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.